So, chapter three, derivatives of a function. Okay, so now derivatives, you're going to hear me say the word derivative over and over and over and over again until you take the AP test and seniors leave and juniors are still here hanging out with me. Juniors and below are here hanging out with me. Okay, so derivatives, this, this is calculus. So what is a derivative? The derivative is simply the value of the slope of the tangent line at a point on a curve because you can't find the slope of a curve you can only find the slope of a tangent line at a specific point okay and we've already talked about this we already know this is called the instantaneous rate of change okay so a derivative is the instantaneous rate of change So we've seen this formula, our limit formula, but now I have this f apostrophe of x. That means f prime of x. That is the derivative. And it'll be the derivative function. Okay, so f prime of x will represent a derivative function. And we can find f prime of x from this limit formula, which we've already used. The limit is h approach zero, f of a plus h minus f of a, all over h. But again, all derivatives are is the slope. Okay, we know slope is change in y over change in x. And this big formula looks nasty, but all it is is a change in y. Okay, but that a plus h, I already broke that down in your notes the other day that it's actually on that curve. We're bringing point q down. And so h approaches zero as my points p and q get closer to each other. So my change in y is f of that, but then as h approaches 0, means my change in h is becoming 0. All right, so multiple forms to write f prime of x. So we've seen this one, f prime of x, our limit is h approaches 0, a plus h. This is what I just had. But I could also write it as f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, same thing, a's and x's are used interchangeably, which you've seen, and it can get confusing because, okay, what's x, what's a? So this would be the same thing, f of x plus h minus f of x. And this one's actually probably a little bit easier to picture what's going on with this because x is the traditional x that we think about. When I throw that a in there and I tell you, well, a is really x, that throws in another curveball to it. But then we also had this one that we labeled as the alternate form. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a, and then x minus a in the bottom. So we saw that as what was called the alternate form of it. All of these mean the exact same thing. All these are doing is finding that f prime of x, which is the slope of the tangent line at some point on our curve. Because again, you can't find the slope of a curve. You can only find the slope of a tangent line at some point on the curve. Okay, let's talk about the derivative a little bit more. I'm talking about derivatives. So the domain for the derivative, domain meaning x values. The domain for the derivative, f prime of x, will be determined by where f of x exists. My original function f of x must exist to be able to find the derivative. The domain of our derivative function may be smaller than the domain of f of x. If f prime of x exists, all that means is that f of x has a derivative at that specific point x. Okay, so if, I'm, if f prime of x exists, meaning, that we, meaning we can find a derivative, then our original function f of x has a derivative at that specific x value. This is called being differentiable. So being able to find the derivative 
verb for that, or the action word for that, is being differentiable. And that's what this whole first section of calculus is called differential calculus, which we're going to do until middle of January or so. And then we'll shift gears to what's called integral calculus. But we're going to be on this differential calculus for a while. Okay, so a differentiable function is a function that is differentiable at every single point in its domain. And in the next section, we're going to go over when functions are not differentiable, or what specific points it fails to be differentiable at. It's differentiable everywhere. We call it a differentiable function. So, let's do a little more practice. Jonathan wanted to see this on the test. Well, we're going to practice a little bit more before I actually test you on it. Okay, if I wanted to differentiate the function f of x equals x squared, what this means is find the derivative. Find the slope of the tangent line. Okay, that differentiate, that's what it means. Okay, we're trying to find the derivative. And the derivative represents the slope of that tangent line. So let's use this form. The x plus h minus f of x all over h when my limit of h approaches 0. Because that is the derivative. Okay. Well, to do that, we need both parts here. f of x is pretty straightforward. That's just x squared. So I'm trying to find my limit as h approaches 0. f of x, we already know that's just x squared. My h stays on the bottom. What is f of x plus h? What did you say, Kelsey? Okay, so this is x plus h squared. So f of x plus h, I would put that in for my x in my function. So x plus h squared and x plus h squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. I have to FOIL that out. It's multiplying two binomials together. It is not x squared plus h squared. Do not make that mistake. Is that 2xh in the middle of it? So this is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared. We're trying to evaluate the limit. Well, I can't do any substitution yet because I have zero in my denominator, but I can do some simplifying. My x squared and negative x squared will go away. So now I just have my limit as h approaches zero of 2xh plus h squared all over h. Still cannot evaluate my limit because I have h in the denominator. I could do some factoring, though, on top. And I could say, well, if I factor out an h from the top, I'm going to have 2x plus h all over h. And that helps me because these go to a useful form of 1. So now my limit is h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. Now I can do a direct substitution. If I put 0 in, all I end up with is 2x. This is the derivative function. Okay? And what this means is, with this function now, I can tell you any slope of the tangent line for the function x squared based on this derivative function, 2x. Okay? So I know x squared is just my parabola. If I want to find the slope of a tangent line, say over here on the negative side, say I chose here at negative 2. I could say f prime of negative 2 is 2 times negative 2, which gives me negative 4, which means the slope of this tangent line is negative 4. That's what it's telling me. Okay, and that checks out. 
Yep, I'm going to have a negative slope to that. If I were to pick at 0, if I were to pick right here at the origin, I would say f prime of 0 would be 2 times 0, which is 0, which makes sense. If I were to draw a tangent line, it would be horizontal, and that would have a slope of 0. Okay, so this derivative function that we found, now I can tell you the slope of the tangent line at any x value on my curve, x squared. So finding the derivative function is helpful. Okay, we did it a little bit in the last section where we found derivative functions, but we also found them at specific points. All right, questions on this? Makes sense, getting a little more comfortable using this formula. Good. All right, let's try and do it again. Well, we know this is going to be 2x, but let's actually do it using this other one. f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. Okay, and we're just going to do this one for, for practice as well. So we're comfortable using different forms. So this is my limit as x approaches a of f of x, which is just that x squared. What's f of a going to be? If f of x is x squared, what's f of a? a squared. So this would be x squared minus a squared all over x minus a. x squared minus a squared, does that stand out as something that we could factor, something we've seen before? Zoe, what do you say? So that's a difference of squares. So this is x plus a times x minus a all over x minus a. Conveniently now those go to 1. And so I'm trying to find my limit as x approaches a of x plus a. So this is where it gets a little a little confusing because I have x's and a's. I have x's and a's mean the same thing, or do they mean the same thing? So if I were to evaluate this when I said h approaches 0 in the last slide, I substituted 0 in. So in this one, as x approaches a, I'm going to put my a in for x. So this becomes a plus a. Okay, simply by substitution, h, or I'm sorry, x approaches a, x becomes a, so my substitution, x turns into a. a plus a is 2a, but we know a and x are the same, so really this is 2x. Okay, so again, we get back to showing that this is actually 2x. Okay, so f prime of x is 2x. So now we can evaluate it for any number we want, and we'll come up with the answer. The slope of the tangent line is an answer. Okay, everybody always asks, well, which one do I use? Do I use as x approaches a, or do I use as h approaches 0? I mean, there's no clear cut one way or the other. I personally, if they tell me to find it at a specific number, I probably use this one more often, and if they ask me to find just the general function, I do it as h approaches 0, okay? So that's just a habit I guess I've fallen into. You can do any of them with either, either formula, okay? So whatever you feel most comfortable with, use it, go with it. If you get stuck or it's not working out, try the other one, see if that works. All right, some notation for the derivative. So again, a lot of this class is understanding the notation, the symbols they use, the questions they're asking, the type of answer they want to see with justification. So we've already talked about this. If you see f apostrophe x, it means f prime of x. That is the derivative. All right, we'll use that a lot, f prime of x. But then you might also see y prime. So y prime would be an example. It might be y equals 2x plus 5, and we're asked to find y prime. 
Okay, so that would just be a function that starts out as y equals would be y prime. We could also have y prime of x if they wrote the initial function as y of x equals 2x plus 5 or something. They would say find y prime of x. Still means the same thing. Simply means derivative. Whenever you see that prime, that apostrophe in anything, they're always talking derivative. Another way you will see it, and we'll use this a lot, is dy dx. So dy over dx, it's not division. It's basically just a symbol to represent the derivative. So this is the derivative of y with respect to x. And it names both variables, uses d to represent derivative. So dy dx. And you'll hear me say that, find dy dx. What is dy dx? Okay, all that's doing, it means the exact same thing as the two rows above it. You're simply finding the derivative of the function. The derivative is that slope function to represent the tangent line. You might also see df dx. So df dx, same thing. It started out with some function f of x equals 3x minus 7 or whatever. Okay? But now we're finding df dx. The bottom is going to represent our independent variable. The top is our dependent variable. So if we start out with f of x, instead of just saying, well, what's f prime of x? They'll say, well, what is find df dx? And that's how you hear me say, I'll just say df dx. I won't say df over dx. I'll just say df dx. And then the last, but not the, I mean, there's still other ones, but these are the most common. You could see it written this way as a d dx of f of x, essentially. So this is saying the derivative of f at x. So when I see it like this, I think of this as like an action that's happening. I'm taking the derivative d dx of f of x. So these all mean the exact same thing. It's just simply different notation that you might see. And not to get confused by the notation or misunderstand the notation. And notation is going to come up and ask me at any time. Or I'm going to emphasize when there's different notations showing you exactly, okay, this means this. And that's, that's part of calculus. There's a lot of different notation. Unfortunately, it means the same thing. All right, let's get into some graphing for a derivative function. So again, a derivative function is simply representing the slopes, the many, many different slopes that are occurring on the original function f of x. So if I were to graph x squared, I know I'd have 1, 1, I'd be up here at 2, 4, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4. So it's going to be a parabola that looks like that. So if I'm asked to graph the derivative function, all I'm graphing is the slopes. All right? There's infinitely many slopes happening on that x squared, and I can represent that as the values for my graph of f prime of x. All right? So if I were to choose my point here at, say, negative 1, we already know that f prime of x, we've done this, is 2x. So we did earlier in the slides. So at 1, so if I wanted to find f prime at 1, that would be 2 times 1. And so that would be, or I'm sorry, 2 times negative 1. That would be a negative 2. So I have a coordinate here of negative 1, comma, negative 2. So if I go negative 1, negative 2, I'm just going to put this as a point on my f prime of x graph. If I want to do it at 0, so f prime of 0 is going to be 2 times 0, so I get 0, so I have a coordinate of 0, 0. If I want to do it at 1, I'd have 2 times 1, which is 2, so now I have a coordinate of 1, 2. 
starts to look, it's just a straight line going right through the origin. All right, this seems very straightforward, but every year students get this mixed up, confused, not sure exactly what to do. How I look at this as well, everything left of the y-axis, everything over here has a negative slope. Okay, on my original x squared graph, everything left of the y-axis has a negative slope, meaning a negative value. So when I go to my f prime of x, everything left of the y-axis needs to be below the x-axis. That represents negative values. Do not look at the slope of the line for f prime of x. Don't get confused on you're not doing anything with the slope of this line. This is representing values, okay? Because if I went to negative 2, it'd be a steeper negative slope. And so that's going to be represented down here further. Okay? As I get steeper, it's representing more negative. Okay? And then at 0, 0 is right here at the origin. And then after I get past the origin, I have only positive slopes. So positive is being represented above the x-axis. So these are all positive values. Do not look at the slope of this line. I'm representing this with positive values. So this is the F prime graph, which is representing slopes of tangent lines of my regular F of X graph. Okay, let's do another one. So I have this one, X cubed minus X. And I don't even need to use my nice derivative formula to figure out what the derivative is. I can sketch the derivative function based on the f of x function that they give me. I know at this point and this point on f of x, what's going to be the slope of the tangent line? Zero. Okay? So I could say these are zero right here and here, and so that's going to cross right here and here, okay? The slope is zero at these points, okay? So when I'm graphing them on the actual f prime of x graph, that's zero, okay? Zero on the x-axis. Here, I have positive slopes. The far left of my graph, that's all positive until it reaches zero. Okay, so I'm above the x-axis, but maybe I'm at, maybe I'm at for a slope of 5 here, and then I'm going up here, I get a slope of like 3, and then here I have a slope of like 1. It's getting smaller and smaller. My slope is getting less and less. So that means I started up here, and I'm going down towards my axis. Okay, so it was a positive slope, so it's above the x-axis. But the actual value of the slope was it was like a slope of five, then a slope of three, then a slope of one, then a slope of zero. So zero is where I hit. All this is a negative in between my zeros or slopes on my f of x. And so here I might have a slope of negative one, and then here I have a slope of negative three, and then here I have a slope of negative one again, and then it goes to zero. So it went negative one. 3, negative 3, negative 1, back to 0. So that kind of comes down like this and then goes back up. It's still negative. I'm still below the x-axis, but negative 1 is closer to the x-axis than negative 3 is. So that's why it goes down and then starts to come back up. And then as I pass by that 0, these are all positive. So I have a slope of like a positive 1, then a slope of positive 3, and then a slope of positive 5 again. So that's shooting back up. So the graph of my f prime of x is going to look like this parabola shape to it. But where those zeros are at, that is important. And then I want to see that I'm above, above the x-axis, below the x-axis, and then above the x-axis again. Representing slopes, the numerical value of the slope. That's what we're graphing. Okay, last slide. If I were to graph this one, okay, we're going to do it on the exact same coordinate axis. 
okay? And we don't even know what this function is, okay? So this could be a potential test question where they don't even give you a function. They just give you the graph of what it looks like, and they want you to graph the derivative function. Well, again, I know these will be my zeros. I'm going to have a zero slope here. And so that's going to represent zeros on my x-axis. All of this here on the left has a negative slope, this whole thing. Okay, this whole time I'm coming down, coming down here, down here, down here. That's all negative. Okay, so that's going to translate to a line like that. Okay, I'm representing negative values. So I'm below the x-axis as I approach zero. But then after I pass my first zero, I have a positive slope. All the way till I get to my next zero. So this is going to loop over like that. And then again, I have a negative slope. So it goes negative until I reach my zero. Right there, and then all of this is positive, so it's going to shoot back up. Okay, and we will we will practice this because this. I'm not sure how the difficulty feels to you right now, but this is something that gets mixed up every year. Okay, questions on how this works? Again, the derivative graph. All we're doing is graphing the slopes of the original graph. Slopes is in numerical values. Feel okay? All right. So for today, we are going to work on 3.1 derivatives. Okay. Due Monday by midnight. Okay. I've removed, help me solve this, and view an example. Okay. We're taking the training wheels off. Should I do it? Should I do it?